Nowadays, it's usually called Christmas, especially in the Western world. And Christmas is Jesus Christ's birthday. On the 25th of December, you give gifts to one another and you tell children that Santa brought them. Of course, the kids are kids and they believe it. But what is the true history behind Santa Claus? In the year 27 AD in the city of Mira, Byzantine Empire, modern day Turkey, a little boy was born named Nicholas. Nicholas had a very wealthy family and they had been trying to have a baby for a very long time and they were devout Christians. After years of trying to have a child, they eventually got their son Nicholas and they couldn't thank God enough for this gift which was Nicholas. But the year is 27 AD and there's a lot of wars, diseases and other dangerous things that go around which is why both Nicholas's mother and father died because of an epidemic and Nicholas was now an orphan. But he was kind of lucky because he had an uncle that was a bishop and he was willing to take care of him. Nicholas's uncle really liked him and whenever he would talk in the church, he would always talk about Nicholas on how he will bring joy to everybody. And since his uncle was very popular around the town of Mira, people got to know Nicholas at a very young age. Just like we said before, Nicholas's mother and father was very wealthy and all that wealth had gone to Nicholas himself. So when he got a little bit older, his uncle gave him full control to his own money. Nicholas figured out a new hobby. He would use all that money and buy different toys for the poor children around town and he would also build toys for them. There is a story in that era that says there was a poor man with three daughters and he couldn't come up with a dowry and he was willing to sell his daughter to slavery because he was so poor. When Nicholas had heard this, he was devastated which is why later that night he went to that man's house and dropped a small bag of gold coins down the chimney into his house. One of the daughters sees a bag drop into the chimney and picks it up in the fireplace and takes it to her father. When her father sees that there was help in form of gold, he can't thank God enough for this gift because he think God gave it to him. Why didn't Nicholas just knock on the front door and give the man the money? It's because back then there was a sense of pride and if you actually hand someone that needed money some money that would be an embarrassment for that man and around town that would make fun of him which is why Nicholas would rather anonymously gift it. After this, this type of work became a hobby for Nicholas. He would ask around town who is struggling with money, who is hungry and he would try to help everyone in need. Around town, a lot of the poor people that needed money got the help they needed and they would talk about it and how they got helped. And eventually they realized that it was Nicholas all along. After word got around that Nicholas is dropping money down the chimney, this is when they started hanging stocking by the fireplace just in case Nicholas drops some gold coins and it falls into the socks. A tradition that remains to this day because everybody has a stocking with their name hanging by the chimney and this tradition began a very long time ago. What Nicholas did changed the culture of this town completely because now people that needed money weren't embarrassed to ask their neighbors and Nicholas's way of life caused these people to not be embarrassed to ask for help. It got to a point where anybody that received help anywhere in the city of Myra, they would thank Nicholas for it, even though Nicholas wasn't behind any of it. Nicholas was pretty much the most famous man in the city of Myra and anybody that needed help and received some help, they would thank Nicholas for it, not the person that actually helped them. Which is why they realize that Nicholas is in every spot of this town at all times, which is why the idea of magical powers started to come along. They thought Nicholas was not a normal person, but had magical powers and he can be in a few spots at once. This is when the story of Santa Claus takes place. We have to note that Nicholas was a real person, 
but these stories and rumors that went around him were all made up afterwards. And the longer the time goes on, the more of a legend Saint Nicholas becomes. The idea of Nicholas stays alive for hundreds of years and the Christians never forget about him. Catholics even refer to Nicholas as Saint Nicholas and when they pray, they say his name. And Saint Nicholas was known as a man that brought happiness. In the 16th century, when half of the Holy Roman Empire turned into Protestant, a man by the name of Martin Luther said, the gifts you get on Christmas come from Jesus Christ himself, not Saint Nicholas. This upset a lot of people in the Christian community and they said this is disrespectful to Jesus Christ himself and it's Saint Nicholas that gives the gifts to us. And this is when he named it Christ Kindle. The story continues until we get to the year 1812. In this year, an American writer by the name of Washington Irving changes the name of Saint Nicholas to Santa Claus. And this was normal for Americans because they like to change the name for everything. It seems like a lot of people liked Washington's writing because it sold a lot and people really liked it. And they got to know the name Santa Claus a little bit better. When Irving realized that it was a success, he wrote more books about Santa Claus relating to Christmas. In the new book, he adds another thing. He says that Santa Claus rides on a magical sleigh that flies through the air and that's how he transports from place to place. The first book made Santa Claus very famous. The second book made him even more famous where all Americans really liked the story and the idea of Santa Claus. In these books, Santa Claus was known as an older man with a full white beard and hair and he was kind of chubby. After this, the idea of Santa Claus started to change for the better and the stories got a little bit more interesting. And the more we move forward, the farther we get from the idea of Saint Nicholas. After, one of the main changes is that they add reindeer in front of the magical sleigh. And it was reindeers that pulled Santa Claus around the world. In the 20th century, they say Santa Claus lives in the North Pole. And he has a bunch of little people which are called elves working for him and they're building the toys that he needs for Christmas Day. The changes continue until we get to the year 1931. In this year, the company Coca-Cola comes up with an ad that changes the world forever. They had designed their own type of Santa Claus and it was a Coca-Cola ad that looked like this. A white and red type of clothing white hair and beard and a white and red hat that's iconic now but it was new back then it was the perfect color for coca-cola because it was their logo color the people of america and around the world liked the idea of santa claus that the coca-cola brand had designed that it remains to this day 90 years later in 2023, Santa Claus looks the same as it did in 1931 because of the design Coca-Cola came up with. Right now, this is how Santa Claus looks like. Maybe later on, a company like Red Bull comes up with a new design and it changes Santa Claus forever once again. But it still hasn't happened yet. This is the power of advertisement and companies know that. With one ad, Coca-Cola changed a symbol of a very famous character around the world. But why does Santa Claus have different names around the world? Like in French, it's called Père Noël. That's because in French, Noël means Christmas and Père Noël means the father of Christmas. Since we're here, let's learn some different words for Christmas itself. Like in Spanish, Christmas is called Navidad. In German, it's like this and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. In Portuguese, they call it Natal. In Italian, it's very close. They call it Natale. So this shows us that Christmas itself is very unique because most Latin-based languages have a similar word for Christmas, except English. What do you guys think? 